everyone. Hello everyone in Millennium. Hello everyone in Southwark. I'm going to do a bit of a story today and the story I'm going to read is Otto. Can you guess what it's about? A bear. Well done, it is about a bear. So, I'm going to do a bit of reading. Ask you to make some predictions, ask you what you think about it and you can just tell the person, anyone in your house, anyone in your room. So, first page. I knew I was old when I found myself on display in the window of an antique store. I was made in Germany. My earliest memories of being stitched together in a workshop. It was quite painful. When my eyes were sewn onto my face, I had my first glimpse of a human being. A smiling lady held me and said, Now, look at this one. Isn't he cute? Then I wrapped up and snuggled in a box. It was very dark. Soon I heard a rustling and ripping noises, and the next face I saw was a little boy cheering, and he hugged me. His name was David, and I was his birthday present. Have a look at the pictures. Have a look how happy David is with his new present. David's best friend, Oscar, lived next door. They spent most of their time together, sharing jokes, stories and games. They called me Otto. One day they decided to teach me how to write. With my clumsy paws, I knocked over the ink pot and splashed myself with purple ink. The stain remained for the rest of my life. Since handwriting was a failure, the boys fetched David's father's typewriter, which made it much easier to use. Can you see the ink stain? Life with David and Oscar was a lot of fun. We would play all sorts of pranks. They would scare old Frau Schmidt by dressing me up as a ghost, lowering me onto a piece of string and swinging me across her window. One day, Oscar asked his mother about the yellow star David had started to wear on his jacket. Mutty, look at David's star. Can I have one like that? I'm afraid you can't, dear, she replied, because you are not a Jew. What is a Jew? asked Oscar. Jews are different to us. They have another religion. The government is against them and makes life very difficult for them. It is unfair and very sad, but they must now wear this yellow star to be singled out. So have a think about when you think this story may have been set then. Was it recently? Was it during maybe one of the world wars? You can have a think. Maybe you could research that. Not long after, some men in black leather coats and others in uniform came to take David and his parents away. As he was leaving, David gave me his best friend, Oscar. From the balcony, I watched Oscar as David and the other people wearing yellow stars were loaded into a truck and driven away. It was just the two of us. We missed David. At bedtime, we would talk about him and remember all the good times we had together. Another gloomy day was when... We all went to the railway station to say goodbye to Oscar's father. He had become a soldier and was leaving for the front, where the war was raging. So it must have been when either World War I or World War II the story was set. Then the bombing started. When the sirens wailed from the rooftops, we ran down to the cellar as quickly as possible to take shelter. Oscar always held me tight. Whole streets were blown to pieces. Among the ruins, the fires lay innocent victims. Then one day a sudden explosion sent me flying into a cloud of smoke. I was knocked out. I don't know how long I lay there, but it must have been several days before I woke up and found myself on a pile of child rubble. Everything was in ruins. Then came tanks and soldiers. There was a lot of shooting. I found myself in the middle of a raging battle. Suddenly, a soldier saw me and stopped. Can you see that? See the teddy bear here? And the soldier that's seen him and stopped? He picked me up, and at that very moment I felt a sudden piercing pain go right through my body. The soldier holding me to his chest fell down moaning. We had been hit by the same bullet. The two men carried us away on a stretcher. The wounded soldier, an American GI, was still clutching me against his bleeding chest. His name was Charlie. We were taken to a hospital where he kept me by his side. As he got better, he mended the rip of my fur and made the fur made by the bullet. 
Charlie told all the nurses, Look at him. Believe it or not, that teddy bear saved his life. He took the brunt of the bullet meant to kill me. This is some kind of newspaper. Teddy bear hero saves life of G.I. Charlie. When G.I. Charlie received a medal for bravery, he pinned it onto my chest. The story made the newspapers. My picture was shown all over the place. I was very proud of all the attention. Charlie renamed me Almano, and I became the mascot of his regiment to bring the soldiers good luck. When the war was over, Charlie went home to America and took me with him. By now, I'd learned enough English to understand what was happening around me. He pulled me out of his army duffel bag and gave me to a little girl, Jasmine, as a present. She was utterly delighted. I'd found a new home. Jasmine pampered me, rocked me in her arms, and sang songs in my ears that I'd never heard before. I slept in a bed made out of a cardboard block box. It was bliss. When Jasmine took me for a walk one day, my happiness came to a brutal end. Three nasty boys snatched me away from her. They used me as a baseball and hit me with a bat. Jasmine called for help, but nobody came. Half blind, having lost an eye, battered, ripped and caked with mud, I finally landed in a trash can. The next morning I was picked out of the rubbish by an old lady wearing a baggy sweater, fastened with string. She put me in a rickety baby carriage full of rags and empty bottles. She sold me to a man who had an antique store. He gave me a new eye, brushed off the mud, mended me and washed me. This is a very old bear. It's a collector's item, he said to himself and placed me in the store window. There I sat, watching the world go by. No one wanted to buy me. Years and years passed, then one rainy evening a man stopped and stared at me through the window. He came into the shop and said with a heavy German accent, That teddy bear in the window was mine when I was a child. I know it's him because of the purple mark on his face. How much does he cost? The man was my old friend Oscar. I was so pleased he'd recognise me. He looked so different. He took me home and for the second time my picture appeared in the newspaper. This time beside the headline, German war survivor finds childhood teddy bear in an American antique store. In the same city, a man read a story in the newspaper. Excited immediately, tracked Oscar down and telephoned him. When Oscar answered the call, this is what I heard. Hello? Who? What? That's impossible! You're my friend David and you live close by? Yes, Otto is here with me. We will come and see you right now. What's your address? We hurried into a taxi and in the hour's time, we were there together again. David and Oscar talked and talked and told each other what had happened since they had last seen each other. David and his parents had been sent to a terrible prison. Both his parents died there. David had been very sick, but he managed to survive. Oscar's father had died at the war and Oscar and his mother were trapped in the ruins during the bombing. They were both wounded. His mother, mother didn't manage to escape, but Oscar did. Oscar and David had led, le led lonely lives ever since and were reunited at last. They knew they would be much happier if they lived together. For the three of us, life was finally what it should be, peacefully normal. Since our happy reunion, I've kept myself busy pounding out this straw in the typewriter, and here it is. The end. So, I'd like to tell you whoever you're listening to that story with, tell them what happened with, in the story. Where did the teddy bear go? Where did he start? Where did he end up? Where did he go next? And next after that. Hope you enjoyed the story and hopefully see you soon.